Okay, everyone. Um, it is the first time that I do this, that I put my PowerPoints on video or record them or whatnot. And um, we kind of have to do this because of what's going on and the new emphasis on distance learning. So we're going to give it a shot. So we're going to start this particular PowerPoint. Uh, where I believe I left off with most of the classes. Um, we we're talking about the Progressive Era and the many reforms um, that we saw unfold in this country during the Progressive Era, which was a very uh, reform open period in American history. Um, so we're going to start with this topic, the topic of child labor. And I think we discussed it in class. Um, <clears throat> many children, many children were still working um, in this country at the time. Uh, particularly work well. It's going to be working class children, children of the poor, immigrant families, et cetera, et cetera. I've seen figures anywhere from a third of the children to perhaps a sixth of the children in this country at the time were working in all kinds of um, fields of employment, if you will. Here we see coal miners and uh, well, some other little girls. Uh, I, I guess they were protesting. Um, child labor i mean and, and this is also connected to the progressive um, drive to expand um, education okay well, the idea is if we expand education we put more money into public education more of these children that um, are currently working would be afforded greater opportunities to go to school um, i mean there's also a labor component to this um, quite often uh, the business owners, factory owners, they prefer children because they could pay children less and, and not have to hire an adult. So you, know, you can understand how an adult could support the movement to end child labor because children were you know, offered a kind of uh, unfair competition um, for jobs. Um, so yes, um, th there's, there's multiple ways that we could look at this of... Um, <clears throat> what led the drive to end the child labor in this country and you know and back to the old uh, the, the the previous topic that we talked about in class you know compulsory education is going to be a part of this as well compulsory education but at the same time um <clears throat> it's going to be tough convincing parents who are, of course you know believe this is the norm they were raised this way that you know they can't put their children in school I mean, I mean, they can't put their children to work, I guess, because they were raised that way. And, and that's going to be the argument. The argument is going to come from from parents that believe they have the right to um, <clears throat> put their children to work if they if they so wish. And and business owners that, that, that feel that they have a, a property right, if you will, to hire whoever they wish, especially if the family is okay with it. And, and as we see there, um, children were employed in just about every sector of the economy and in our textile mills and our factories as we, the little girl here in the corner in coal mining and in, in agricultural uh, ventures if you will and working the land that been an old, been a very old one even in the cities as paper boys shoe shine boys so you're talking about millions of children in this country um, a little more than a hundred years ago, being deprived of a childhood, being deprived of an education, and being put to work. And the image of that little boy there with uh, the pipe, I guess. I mean, who knows how old he is, but that's a powerful image. Um, when you're considering, you know, childhood, uh, you know, stolen by adults, um, and then how much of a child is left with, with in that child. So, uh, were there activists that fought against um, child labor? Absolutely, there was. Uh, probably one of the most well-known ones was Mother Jones. Mother Jones, um, born Mary Harris Jones, uh, Irish-born American school teacher and dressmaker, prominent union organizer, community organizer, and activist very involved with uh, various major strikes in the country uh, during the progressive era she was also one of the co-founders co of the iww um kind of told you her backstory um she her husband and four children were lost during a yellow fever outbreak in 1867 
Uh, the family business was destroyed during the Chicago Fire of 1871, and from that point forward, she she dedicated herself to uh, labor organizing, both of the Knights of Labor and then with the United Mine Workers. Um, but <clears throat> the kind of activism that she really was known for was her activism with children, particularly um, her efforts to get children out of uh, the factories, the mills. Uh, so, sometime around 1903, she, uh, 1901, 1903, she became very involved in <clears throat> the efforts to get children out of the factories in the Pennsylvania, New York area. Um, <clears throat> she was behind large, um, she was one of the organizers of, uh, trying to get 46,000 textile workers, many of them children, to stage the largest strike in in Philadelphia history, um, what they were doing was demanding a reduced work week of 55 hours and a ban on night work by women and children. And of course, the, the factory owners had a problem with this. So, you know, one of the things that she did to uh, to bring attention uh, to the plight of these children um, was lead them on a march. Okay, she was, she was a, a fierce opponent of um, child labor and a masterly tactician. Jones seized on a march of young workers as a way of publicizing the strike while also exposing the evils of child labor and the excess of industrial capitalism. Uh, children were sent to work in coal mines and mills to supplement meager family incomes and as a result suffered stunted growth and maiming injuries. Um, 1900 census reported that one sixth of American children under the age of 16 were employed, and this was a, probably a, a gross undercount. Uh, more children worked in the textile manufacturing than any other trade. By 1900, textile factories and allied trades dominated um, that whole uh, Philadelphia, New York area of the country. Um, so, long story short, she gets all these kids together. Uh, the idea is to march to Oyster Bay, where, um, of course, uh, Theodore Roosevelt lives, right? And, well, she got there, and, and basically, um, Roosevelt's secretary did not want to grant her an audience, um, but that doesn't matter, you know, she was she was able to bring attention to this subject. Um, it's not going to be resolved one day to the other. Um, there is going to be federal legislation um, <clears throat> before the end of the, of the Progressive Era. I think it was called the Dyer Act. And Florence Kelly was behind a lot of that. Um, but it was struck down by the courts, claiming that it deprived the property rights of business owners. And we're not going to have substantial laws deal, dealing with child labor until pretty much the 1930s. You have to keep in mind, if, if I go to that previous side of those children, you know, many of these children were exploited, not only with low pay, but quite often put in very dangerous positions. And of course, being denied an education is abuse in itself, but many of these children were exposed. Um, you throw kids in an adult world, they were exposed to all sorts of abuses by the adults around them physical and, and and yes you know even sexual abuse um on top of the you know the hard labor that they were forced to perform so uh, you know all around pretty horrendous situation um for millions of children in this country uh, prior to the progressive era